Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have a session of the Expert Knowledge Club. The topic is influence of COVID-19 on Belarus. This session will last for two hours. During the first hour, the speakers will answer the questions, and then we'll have a Q&A. Today's speakers are Philip Bicano, a sociologist, author of How do Belarusians React to Coronavirus Opinion Poll. Next, Lev Lvovsky, Senior Research Fellow at BIROC. COVID economy.by project and Mikhail Doroshevich, executive director of Baltic Internet Policy Initiative. I would like to remind you that we are recording this discussion. However, the Chetamaus rules still apply. So if you want to say something that you will do not want to be quoted on, please let us know in advance. This way we'll be able to stop the recording and all other participants of the discussion will not quote you on this. Hence, it will not end up in the final recording. I would also like to remind you that we have the interpretation into English available. So if it's the English you want, please select uh, this appropriate channel. You are also welcome to raise your hand and ask your questions in the chat. If you now I'd like to give floor to Maldi Majeka, our moderator today. Thank you, Anton. I would like to thank all our guests. Good afternoon, everyone. Today we're discussing a, a seemingly not the most important topic like the COVID, because we have a used to living with COVID in our daily life. We are facing new challenges, new threats all the time and on the backdrop of the hot news about uh, Kazakhstan and Ukraine and Belarus, we forget that COVID is one of the main challenges that uh, uh, society in Belarus and elsewhere is facing, that mankind is facing, humankind is facing. So we keep forgetting that the that COVID is influencing our life. But the laws of the media space are still not uh, always connected with the laws that the society is governed by. Of course, uh, COVID in influences the society, the business, and all other things. We'll talk about this in detail. For this reason, we will be looking into the scientific data presented by some of our speakers today. We know that there are some trust issues towards the official Belarusian statistics about the COVID. And we know that the mortality rate, official mortality rate is not particularly trusted by everyone. This, the state does not always want to share the, this information with this society, with the wider public. We'll try to compensate for this today. You know, uh, not recently, we there have been a lot of research conducted about COVID, its role and its influence. This way or the other, we'll be able to find out new things, even though in the next hour and a half, we will know, we'll not know any secret data. Still, we'll uh, try to understand how COVID affects the society, affects various groups of the society and how it changes the life of Belarusians. So to come to uh, the main part, I uh, would like to give floor now to Filip Bikanov, who, as I know, has been engaged in a number of surgical research, and at least he had his part, played his part there. He worked with the Belarusian society and particular groups researching how COVID affects them. So, Filip, the floor is yours. Let's try to understand how pandemic changed the life of Belarusians um, on the whole and uh, some 
particular groups. Thank you, Vadim. I'm afraid I will not be able to tell you anything new. Uh, all this has been already mentioned uh, in the past, tens of times, particularly how COVID affected the life of Belarusians. Various research results have been presented. I know that my colleagues have presented slides. I haven't uh, done this, so I'll try to remember the information later in the Chenham House format. I will share with you uh, information of the latest and the most fresh data. Of course, the pandemic really affected the lives of Belarusians. One of the research studies, uh, the economic factor was compared with the political factor and the economic factor. Some time ago, COVID uh, was a, a dominant, a dominating factor, particularly for the people who are not particularly involved in the politics in Belarus. I would like to remind you that, that for fem Belarus and females, the COVID-19 has always been more relevant. At the same time, we need to understand that the COVID-19 is a more of a part of the new sad normality, like the bad weather, for example, it's not going anywhere. Uh, but definitely we shouldn't pay too much attention to it. And we cannot do this anyway, to be constantly worried about the COVID-19 uh, when it's hard for me to say for, because I'm not in Belarus, but uh, I see that uh, not many steps are taken in Belarus officially to fight COVID. COVID-19, hence COVID-19 has turned into a, 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 like a small rain. Many vulnerable groups and non-particularly vulnerable have been affected by COVID-19. Much less attention is now paid to other ailments because the uh, healthcare system is overburdened by the COVID. Reports clearly show this. I'd like to remind you that we had interviews with experts that claimed uh, the huge number of COVID affected patients, which leaves less time for the handicapped people uh, who also try to leave their homes much less frequently. Uh, the elderly, without a doubt, here I'm very much affected. As I said, there's nothing new coming from me anymore. Uh, we can also talk about vaccines here. Claim something different here. Thank you, Philip. Well, actually, we do believe in vaccines here. So, I hope Lev Lvovsky will be able to give more information uh, because on the one hand, uh, on, in the, the COVID, COVID, COVID economy website, I saw some um, a lot of inf interesting data, but I believe not everyone who is interested in this went to the website. So, uh, Lev, could you present to us the main conclusions and ideas about how COVID has affected the economy, the private sector, the business circles, and uh, can you also tell us about the measures taken by the authorities? I know that in uh, different countries, there were different approaches. Some countries uh, supported the business, the businesses, others didn't. How? did COVID affect the Belarusian business environment? Th thank you very much. I'll uh, show you a picture right away. Hope you will see it. Uh, it explains the measures taken in Belarus. From the point of view of economic analysis, Belarus is an, uh, quite a unique case. It's a country in Europe that 
uh, took the smallest number of measures to fight COVID to limit the spread of the pandemic. According to the government stringency index, Belarus, as you can see, is lagging behind. It's in a white spot, looking a little bit yellowish. As to the Belarus, uh, and uh, how it was affected by the economic crisis of, launched by the COVID. On the one hand, uh, some countries that suffered from the uh, COVID uh, were the ones that put the economy into the artificial coma. So it's, it wasn't a regular economic crisis. It had to do with the government uh, banning you from working, from uh, going on holidays and visiting sports events and so on. Hence, nothing like that happened in Belarus. Therefore, we didn't witness any serious decline, uh, economic decline in Belarus. It was quite minimal compared to our neighbors and the developing developed countries. Still, COVID did find a way to affect the Belarusian economy. In particular, since we not particularly open as an economy, even though we did not introduce lockdown, the lockdown was introduced by our main trade partners like Russia. Hence, we uh, in 2020, we uh, suffered the, the decline of, of the demand, particularly when Russia was uh, really introducing lockdown. Uh, but by then, Europe has been in lockdown for a while, and the Western consumers could not consume our uh, goods. Uh, the second influence in the economy was that that even though the uh, government did not force people to stay at home, people did read the news, uh, watch. They watched news. Uh, they saw what was happening in Italy, in the United States, where was there were, were not places for uh, dead bodies, and people were self isolated. We have uh, mobility indexes by Google and by Yandex that show how many people move around the city. Uh, at some point of time, uh, self-isolation in Belarus was even uh, higher than that. Mm, particularly in the cities. In Minsk, the self-isolation index was higher than that uh, uh, in Moscow, even though it was an order. And, in Moscow for people to stay indoors. Hence the re retail sector, rest restaurants, bars, hotels, they all suffered. Our government came up with uh, uh, measures to support the business environment and businesses. We can say that n almost none of the measures, economic measures, I mean, was significant. Uh, the government allowed to freeze the payment on loans and uh, other things that played quite a small role. The government supported only the state businesses. Again, uh, the, the uh, direct loans were started were, and the government sector didn't, was not affected by the COVID while the private sector did. Uh, not all of it, but, but particularly those are working in the mobility sector and um, foreign trade. Uh, in 2020, salaries went down the most uh, among the retail workers and the hospitality workers, uh, as well as the transportation um, staff who suffered the decline in services and uh, clients. 
Then, as Philip said, people got used to COVID in summer 2020. The level of self isolation was going down. People started visiting restaurants, cafes, and retail sector was uh, reviving. And uh, in 2020, transportation uh, routes were in the red, while and then gradually they uh, went on the uphill in 2021. In 2021, COVID affected the economy bullish once again. This time, it covered the whole of the economy uh, due to the uh, increase of the postponed growth, as well as in China. Uh, in, in China, uh, as I said, in those countries, the economic crisis was artificial. The government banned people from consuming. It means that the well-off society and well-off layers of society started accumulating money and people who uh, spent less than 30 percent of the of their income on food uh, accumulated the money because they couldn't spend them uh, this money on purchasing a new car on golden holidays and something like that because of that the uh, world demand for some uh, goods started actively growing in second quarter of 2022, which explains our foreign trade miracle when our export goods, uh, even though it didn't uh, increase in terms of volume, uh, the prices for some separate goods like uh, potassium, like potash and uh, wood started growing actively without a doubt it um, affected the whole of the economy particularly in the export uh, sphere and the pr industrial production sphere this way covid on the one hand it started negatively for belarus and it ended with an unexpected positive thing after the third quarter of 2021 the belarus economy was growing 3.3 percent uh, similar growth was witnessed about a decade ago as to uh, us paying for it we paid for it with some excessive mortality rate but even according to the data that we have it turned out that uh, our excessive mortality is big but it's not much bigger than of that in Russia, which uh, unlike Belarus was uh, introducing some measures to protect the society. Thank you very much. Indeed, it started uh, in an apocalyptic manner, but it ended with an economic miracle. Can you also add something about the economic influence on households, on Belarusians? The the, we know that the businesses were affected, but the people who were not affected in the, by the COVID in the worst way, can we say that Belarusians, uh, particularly some representatives of uh, special fields like the wood processing fields became much more well off or did the end consumer, was the end consumer affected? At the macro level, Belarusians were almost not affected in general. Some separate categories of, of people did suffer, were affected, and they were answering the, our questions saying that the incomes were going down quickly. Traditionally, we don't have uh, welfare. Uh, I mean, the welfare is quite small, even though if your uh, salary is cut by 90%, you are still 
continue working. So the um, jobless rates were not going up and the bonuses were uh, done with. As I said, the uh, people who suffered and uh, worked in uh, small private companies suffered the most at the beginning of the pandemic. In April, May, it was the people who worked in the retail sector that suffered the most. And of those working in the hospitality sector, they were followed by the transportation field workers. Another gender aspect, while in the beginning of the pandemic from April to September 2020, both sexes uh, suffered from COVID pandemic um, economically in the same way. Starting from September, the women were affected more by the pandemic. It had to do with the fact that the people were doing the best not to let their children visit schools, particularly those who could afford it. But this homeschooling, traditionally for us, unfortunately, but uh, it was uh, done by the females. No, thank you very much. Now I'd like to give floor to Mikhail Drashevich. <laughs> like uh, now to share the presentation of Mikhail. It will tell us how COVID affected the Belarusian society because uh, there's various data and various research about what uh, happened and uh, what was affected and how it happened. Right, I'm launching the presentation. Meanwhile, I'll tell you a funny story. In January 2021, Andrei Zirin, Maria Marinovska, and other people met to discuss this topic. So it was uh, for me quite easy to update some slides and uh, present this information to you. I'll start with the information about the research conducted in August last year. This data was published quite widely in, uh, in the autumn, in autumn. Uh, It, it was the rate of Belarusians who were not ready to get vaccinated that caught the attention of the wider circles. 32% said they had already been ill, even though in May last year, this figure was less than 30%. Today, Philip already said, presented, unveiled the fresh figures and uh, considering the spring wave there could be some serious changes showing how people were affected here i would like to go back to uh, the never-ending topic uh, and say that unfortunately there's very few open sources and um, the Ministry of Healthcare of Belarus is not particularly active uh, here. Now I'll tell you about the COVID effects in Belarus in, in the last several years. As you can see, Uh, 
Right, we have a technical difficulties. Uh, unfortunately, the presentation has frozen, so um, we'll ask Mikhail to restart the presentation. Right, let's do it once again. Так. Что видно сейчас? О, вот сейчас видим какие-то графики уже. Right now we'll see we are seeing the graphs. Some graphs. Right. Okay. Просто она просто говорит о том, что как у меня, что волны на них все равно видны на этих графиках. You can see the waves, the graphs. Лев has mentioned the data. Particularly the link that was available last year, still relevant this year. You can see a big number of people who are sick with COVID. We also can he see here that according to the official date, 1,700 people now. It's it's about 6,000 people officially. As to the mobility, you can see on the graph a um, big decrease in figures. It had to do not with the pandemic as such, but or with absence of internet connection in Belarus. And the remaining ones show the figures affected by the New Year holidays. Indeed, it is actually the same data. The Google receives the data from smartphones and browsers. This is the data collected and processed by the routers. It's important to note here the limitations mentioned by Lev. It shows the limitations introduced in the country and restrictions introduced in the country. Here we can see uh, the growing number of sick people. Belta, the state agency, information agency, regularly updates the uh, figures. They did not add the vaccination figures here in the statistics, unfortunately. Again, the big source of information is uh, important source of information is the telegram channel of the healthcare ministry they pay more attention to it than to the website compared to last january the uh, used to have 38000 subscribers now it has 34000 subscribers even though the this information is supposed to be positive, then it suffered the loss of subscribers. As it can be connected with the fact that the pandemic has become part of the daily life and some people got tired of monitoring this information. We observe the social media and you can see here the graph uh, featuring the general number of mentions of the COVID-19 in Belarus. Here, the new uh, variants like Delta and Omicron. You can see uh, the topic of vaccination marked by yellow that was topical in uh, January and during the whole year. Uh, 
sometimes it's even more i mean there are more mentions of pandemic than it is of vaccinations if we consider the source here mentions if we compare january last year and january this year we can see a change here last year one of the main sources of information and discussion was facebook while well, this year the first graph shows the mentions in the contact and the second one in youtube if we compare the main sources uh, citation sources we can see that the number of posts about pandemic has gone down if we judge if we consider the topic of vaccination as i said it was relevant during the whole of the last year here you i would like to pay your attention to draw attention to this point on the 27th of december it's always interesting to understand what kind of news will feature on that day not to torture you i will say that it was then that the decision was taken to vaccinate children and teenagers as you can see it uh, uh, ended up uh, with the much more people discussing the topic than October in November when people were discussing wearing masks. There were people with different opinions there. Another important topic that accompanies the pandemic is the topic of the inaccurate information or fake information uh, very often these are not fakes of, but factoids last year we discussed the cases when there were countries um, uh, some unusual medications that could be applied to treat COVID. So these are not fakes. I mean, the tea fungus or kombucha. Here we see the number of mentions of the various fakes. And you can see the main problem here. The main issue here of, is the forced vaccination. Unfortunately, we know a lot of people who don't believe science, don't have enough information, and were negatively affected and, or even died because they did not believe it could affect them. We can note here that in, in Belarus, these fakes like this story about the 5g or chips and graphene they were not actually discussed in belarus they were not actually spread but the people And it's important here to note the results of our research about the optimism of Belarusian online audience. They believe that uh, they can easily agitate fake information. But it turned out that men, uh, they are actually mistaken much more often than women here. Uh, 
In terms of number of subscribers, uh, some those in Telegram channels, this spread information about uh, vaccination figures, which are false. The Telegram as an information source is quite popular. Uh, it could also be a source of fake information. This leads to the decreased number of vaccinations, as we can see that when we asked people about the vaccination measures, uh, why they didn't want to get vaccinated, they said that they were afraid of um, uh, negative effects. We remember the power biotech vaccine that was not available for those. It turned out that from January to August, it was mentioned very often. And here are seven pieces of news that were actively viewed. We can see the sources of information here. On the one hand, it was information about the side effects of the vaccine that are not, the vaccine that is not available to those. On the other hand, it's, this source of information are in Russia. I would see several things in absence of the independent media could uh, that could provide the true information about vaccines uh, vaccination i guess and they could also publish information about the vaccines that are not available so in the end people st stopped believing in uh, or trusting vaccines that are, are in fact available in Belarus, the Russian or Chinese ones. And there was an instance of manipulation when last news uh, this week, uh, news emerged that the China has provided 3 million of doses of vaccines for Belarusians. And the news said that 1.5 million of doses were bought, while 1.5 million were provided for free. But it turned out that 3 million of doses were bought with 50% discount. Regular search is very important because I believe this topic has not become irrelevant and mundane. It affects our well-being, our health. Uh, now we talk more about vaccinations. Uh, and I think in the future we'll be talking more about the decline of pandemic. Uh, hopefully the number of people getting sick with COVID will go down. And hopefully we'll be able to confirm it with numbers. Thank you, Mikhail. Indeed, it's very interesting to hear information about the Russian fakes or factoids. Uh, it's also important to stop fakes about the vaccines. Now research. Oh, we discussed vaccines. Uh, in the summer, the statistics were very sad for the Sputnik. And other vaccines not available for Belarus. It's important to note one thing here. We keep forgetting about it. Just uh, like in case of China, we uh, basically can purchase Western vaccines 
at low price. About a billion of doses, according to some statistics, have been transferred from the EU to other countries, and the WHO website actively publishes information about which vaccines are tested where. In the case of Belarus, if the decision is taken to use these vaccines, they must be tested by the healthcare minister of Belarus first. So there'll be no instant effect of receiving Western vaccines, unfortunately. Indeed, thank you very much, Mikhail. Let's now talk about, I mean, in the same order, uh, how changes of approaches, measures taken by the authorities, affected the well being of Belarusians. I feel like they were quite chaotic. But uh, the, even though the obvious thought here would be that the th steps taken by the authorities affected the society negatively, I think we should th discuss uh, the attitude of people to their well-being, healthcare, to vaccines, and so on. Philip, what do you think about this? Indeed, uh, on the whole, This has been mentioned a number of times. Nobody has tried to measure the effect of inconsistent stance of the government, particularly how inconsistent communication affects the COVID and uh, its perception of by the people. But uh, judging by the level of trust, exhibited by the research conducted by the Chatham House, we we'll see that we have a num group of people who do trust the, the government, another group that doesn't trust the government, and a third group that uh, moderately trust the, go trust the government. Hence, statements about uh, the dangers of the virus and the number of sick people are viewed differently by these two, three groups. Particularly those people who don't trust the government, they believe that the government is still hiding something and still distorting the figures. People who do trust the government, believe that the government is actually coping with the coronavirus effects. I don't think the mixed management played a major role because quite a number of people in the Rus, they perceive the COVID um, without any hysteria. There are people who don't pay any attention to this. Even a long time ago, we um, made an analysis where we had three groups of people, those worried about COVID, not worried about COVID, and uh, the people who are not worried about COVID at all. Those who perceive COVID uh, in a normal way, in a regularly, they don't care what the government says. COVID is not an important thing, it's not a relevant thing for them. It's not a relevant topic. The majority of people 
uh, they're treating COVID as a bad weather. Those who are really worried about COVID, here we must say that potentially these people We witness the link, the connection between them and the government approaches. But people like that, this inconsistency, this neglect exhibited by the communication channels, looked. Uh, uh, special in a way. It distorted the perception that they are used to. The fact that it has been around for two and a half years affects much more the perception of people and the fact that visually there have been no catastrophe. We can talk about uh, excessive mortality rate. We can also talk about some hidden statistics, the number of pensioners and other who have suffered. But this is the information that can be seen by the experts community. In the streets, we don't see any panic, don't see any feelings that everything is collapsing. The government is collapsing and it's not coping and the healthcare system is not coping. We don't see anything like this on the streets. It, and this affects the pe people much more. While well, the communication policy of the government that affected the events that uh, came before the elections and the result of the election. Because the, it was the match that was lit and uh, affected the bomb, led to the bomb exploding. Thank you, Philip. I uh, remember a meme that I like to show to West journalists. One of the pages of the Minsk Truth. You can see the messages that Americans have never been to the moon or Americans are dying of hunger. At the same time, it has the slogan to vaccinate. So uh, it, it looks in a very strange way. So clearly um, a person would not believe the message of uh, getting vaccinated, the importance of getting vaccinated, if those messages are placed next by one by one. Uh, can you also comment about inconsistency of government approaches? Uh, do you think this inconsistency was rhetorical? and hence did not affect the people as such. Well, it uh, depends on how you perceive this question. Economically, there are important correlations between the social economic status of the person and the attitude towards COVID. Um, among other things, uh, we had the research conducted with said to the more well of people who are more worried about COVID. The regression uh, here is uh, evident. People who are more well off, they speak better English, they follow the news, and uh, their news, their quality of life is better. So it's important for them to live longer. So it's the simplest logic that they follow. What else can be said about economic 
consequences or inconsistencies of the authorities. I could say that the authorities was uh, quite consistent regarding the COVID epidemic. Uh, we must separate two periods, the first and second quarter of 2020, when COVID was something new, something unusual, and nobody knew what to expect from it. And uh, we need to understand there was time when the political crisis in Belarus started. At the very beginning, the political agents were expecting from the authorities much more participation, much more, many more interventions, particularly in the background of two reasons. First, that all other countries, the majority of developed countries started to actively help the citizens and their economic agents. I mean, here are the companies and uh, self-employed. And the second reason is that Belarus is a classic uh, name state. I mean, here that people are not used to the government saying, do what you want and uh, save yourself. You're free. Many people, just like the entrepreneurs, they expected the government to take a more active stance in protecting the interests and particular business interest and in protecting the, them from COVID. It never happened. At the beginning, indeed, there are many uh, business trade unions and federations that expected the aid packages from the government. It was only after the second quarter of 2020 they understood that no significant help was coming their way. Consequently, they uh, knew that they could count on themselves. The position that the government supports uh, mostly the state enterprises, but not uh, private enterprises, nothing new here. Nothing inconsistent here. I think it's quite consistent. It has been consistent for a while. The business community, at least in the last five years, positively per perceived the non-participation of the state in their life. The fact the government stopped uh, interfering in uh, some business spheres was a plus for them. So nothing new here. As to the period of... Uh, late summer 2020, what was happening after the beginning of the political crisis, and the misgivings there about corona, the coronavirus, just like Philip said, they was, was subsiding. People got used to that. And the business uh, businesses knew and saw the world work in new conditions. When we uh, face something new, I guess the last pandemic was about 100 years ago when the Spanish flu was getting spread and was spreading around the world. Uh, people tend to uh, think too much of the fears, I fear too much. Then the political crisis played a much more important role for the economy of uh, private individuals and the business entities than the pandemic. But whichever side you approach this, you approach this here, the direct influence of the coronavirus and the state mm, was put in the back burner. Uh, and uh, on the foreground were the actions of the government come because of the political crisis. For the economy, it was the freezing of the ruble liquidity that was played the most important part and the key workers here and key businesses they suffered mostly from the internet blackout talking about the more contemporary modern phase and the, how coronavirus affects our foreign economic miracle foreign trade miracle here again we were uh, rather lucky. Uh, here's an example. In the, the second, third, and fourth quarter, 2020, when 
economic prospects were unclear and uh, demand went down in state industrial enterprises, people kept producing huge volumes of uh, products that were accumulated in the warehouses. It in increased the risk of these enterprises. Their financial state became uh, much more vulnerable and more fragile. But again, we were lucky. At the restorative growth of 2021 and uh, the growth of the export to export export demand um, have uh, helped us to clear our warehouses we forgot about the term playing with the tractors and jug juggling with tractors when several years ago the tractors were so excessive that there were there have been there were so many of them that uh, they were accumulating various parts of Belarus. Indeed, they were bored and they um, were turned into foreign currency. Again, it was a risky step, but all of a sudden we were lucky and uh, we ended up in the black. As supporters of the Russian economic model would say, all the criti uh, critics were shamed. I would add that the foreign trade miracle was a miracle because nobody expected it. The growth that was achieved by Belarusian economy in 2021 was not expected, but not by either Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Economy or government experts let alone the foreign organizations like Eurasian Fund or, or various analysts, including those from Moody's. So I guess we shouldn't really recommend something like that to serious players. Mikhail, do you add, have anything to add about how this consistency in the government's rhetoric? Let's remember the cases of the masks, all the pros and contras. Did all these things affect the behavior of Belarusians? Of course. I would argue with my respected colleagues here, because from what they said, it, we can make a strange conclusion that that because Belarusians did not pay any attention to the COVID, the economy grew, people got used to it, but it shows that actually people were not very demanding any measures to overcome the economic hardships. Uh, the SMEs that were affected by by this were not part of the supply chain. Did not get any get any postponements of loan payments or. People did not get any access to vaccines. Have a very high level of mistrust towards vaccines. I wouldn't be that optimistic. I mean, as optimistic as my colleagues are. In this case, we are not talking about a social crisis or a new economic miracle, we talk about life of people and uh, the viability uh, of the healthcare system. We saw, we see that it's very troubling. Going back to what was said, indeed, uh, the topic of the forced vaccination is one of the 
topics that is accompanied by the biggest number of the fake news, fake information. It led discussion, it led to the situations when we learn from about people who travel around without masks, don't wear them in public places. This is not force and this is not restriction because the negative experience of neighboring states shows that uh, there is limitations uh, of uh, vaccination. Is very much connected with the, a lack of the information campaign. And uh, in conclusion, I would say that the communication uh, or PR campaign about overcoming uh, the fear of vaccination has been has been failed. Uh, here's an example of one and the website of the healthcare ministry. I mean, do any participants of today's session know that the Health Ministry has its own YouTube channel? Of course, it doesn't have millions of views, but it does put up some sane things. And it turns out that Healthcare Ministry is posting videos that uh, tell people how to overcome uh, the effects of COVID because we know that there are a lot of COVID uh, effects that have not been properly studied. Particularly, it leads to a lot of people suffering from depression. If you talk with people who have been sick with COVID, you will see that uh, many people are were depressed and it was difficult for them to overcome this. Healthcare, the healthcare ministry prepared the videos that have 100, 200 views because nobody knows about them. There's not a single regular PR campaign that uh, communication campaign that would tell people about uh, protective measures or vaccination. Going back again to healthcare, made part of the economy and sales of tractors. It's just part of the economy. Healthcare is a very important part of the economic system and its state now, Belarus, in terms of its capabilities, in terms of generating some added value, it doesn't have much to write home about. So I believe there's a lot of things to discuss here. I uh, we shouldn't say that everything is bad, but uh, we should come up with new solutions. We need to think how to help the SMEs, how to re-engineer healthcare system, what measures we should come up with, the short-term and long-term measures. Going back to the collapse, some Western vaccines, they need to be tested and recommended by the healthcare ministry first to be available for Belarus. It's, it needs to be done by someone. I started my presentation by saying that a year ago we had a, almost the same discussion. And then I came up with an idea that it would be great to have a vice prime minister on pandemic and overcoming pandemic effects on vaccination and other things, because it requires the cooperation of a big number of the state bodies, requires the various communi communication, cooperation, and so on. Thank you, Mikhail, indeed. I'm glad that we are now discussing the, the measures. I wanted to talk about this before. Our participants can also 
express their opinion or ask questions. If somebody wants to do that, please raise your hand or write about it in the chat. Uh, talking about what can be done, I'd say that I have uh, accessed the healthcare ministry YouTube. Indeed, it's uh, much more much better than I uh, expected it to be. There, there's a lot of videos uh, uh, about vaccination. Some videos have about 200 views. Well, luckily we uh, get more views. I mean, YouTube channel. So uh, we might as well work as PR specialist for the healthcare ministry to promote their videos. I don't know if uh, they're particularly well uh, made and easy to access and easy to understand, but uh, indeed they should enjoy more popularity. Going back to what can be done, based on what has been said and based on the fact that over two years have passed since the pandemic, We've seen that the policy, policies of the government are inconsistent. Some people said the masks are bad for you. The YouTube channel is not particularly popular. The question is, based on what we know, what can be done? What should the, the society and the researchers do? What should people who understand that a lot of problems should do? Based on what we have. Philip, what do you think about this? There are not many tools for large-scale things, uh, and they're all in the hands of the powerful people or organizations like UNICEF or other UN agencies. We might try using them communication mechanisms that are used by the healthcare ministry. I think that This work has been underway. And also it's, I don't know what the society can do. The society can go and uh, get vaccinated. Every individual can do this. They can try to convince uh, their friends that they shouldn't really have been to minds about that. In 2020, there were more ways to do that, to achieve this, particularly in the spring and the summer, but this grassroots self-organization, grassroots get involved, it led to some results. Uh, I don't think it's possible to create any structures like that, any agencies uh, you simply get closed by the police, get banned. But uh, what we are left to do, we left uh, with us being active individually, uh, getting vaccinated. Nothing else comes to my mind at the moment. Well, we'll see uh, about others. When you mentioned UNICEF, I, uh, I remember when uh, some posters with USAID were torn down because uh, 
it featured the USA logo, even though they were about fighting COVID. So the question is, what can be done for businesses? If you allow me, I will react to what was said by Mikhail Drashevich. He wanted to argue with us, and uh, actually, I uh, would not want to argue with Mikhail because, in general, I agree with him. Indeed, the situation with tractors is good, but the situation in the society is not as good as that with tractors. Moreover, from the point of view of the healthcare, uh, I think one of them main negative consequences of the pandemic is that the trust of the key institutions of the state authorities have been undermined. Nobody is watching new healthcare videos because the healthcare ministry has lost its trust by its uh, attempts, clumsy attempts at falsifying uh, information. As an university instructor, I may say that if my students did the same, they would not uh, get a good mark from me because people who do that don't understand some fundamental principles and they don't explain in the first weeks of the statistics course. The same is true about other industries and institutions. But it's particularly important with uh, when it comes to healthcare ministry because it's the ministry that we're supposed to trust. Now we're in a situation when, if the if the healthcare ministry says that smoking is bad, the majority of the population will say that smoking is good for you, and the healthcare ministry is pursuing its goals. Also, the Belstat still cannot publish the mortality rate for, for 2020. I would like to remind you that Belarus is the only uh, developing or developed countries that doesn't have any, any basic statistics available, at least for the last two years. As to the, indeed it's all very bad and unpleasant and uh, particularly the undermining of this uh, trust institutions. Even if the authorities go away, I mean, the regime will change, they will, we will still suffer the consequences. As to what can be done, he agree with Philip, who said that uh, not that much can be done. Now everyone can fight with uh, coronavirus at the level of their work. Uh, household. They can go buy some masks, uh, get vaccinated, not to visit any big events. Uh, of the good things, uh, the state media uh, are not join any popularity which means that the uh, um, strange uh, recommendations of how to overcome coronavirus are not popular with people. And I guess any individual living in Belarus has been, has come across the uh, beneficial advice on how to overcome coronavirus pandemic and if it affects uh, every Belarusian can, now have, can help themselves. Unfortunately, they don't have access to the foreign vaccines uh, like Pfizer and Moderna. But even uh, this can be done. I mean, the, the solutions for that. We started talking about what can be done. And we concluded that, that it's the, there are not many things to do uh, that possibly to be done. And it boils down to anything you can do, you can do in your household, in your family. Mikhail, uh, are there any 
good ideas. What, do you, what ideas do you have about what can be rec recommended to the mass media outlets that have relocated? Pan is relaunching its uh, operations in the new platform. The national way is working from abroad. What can we expect from them? Should we expect from them continuous information about the masks or what is the strategy for organizations that are not happy with the authorities? What, what can be can they change outside the household? That's a very good question. Of course, I believe that development of the communication strategies is a very important thing, particularly right now. Lev Lvovsky has uh, said that the health community has lost trust. It actually retained the trust, but it did lose the trust in the eyes of the citizens. If we go back to uh, the topic of the communications, we'll see that it's not so easy here because the media outlets that uh, now relaunch their activities abroad, they face the problems connected with the challenge channels used to promote their information to the wider public. And here I mean that on the one hand, I mean, we can discuss for a long time. And we can be quite pessimistic about the current status of the Belarusian media ecosystem, particularly because uh, a lot has been destroyed. I really hope that that if they start working at the same level in terms of the content production, this will change the situation as to how people could receive the data about the pandemic. So we need to come up, they need to come up with a comprehensive program that will include a, a, a certain step, a certain set of publications that would provide uh, truth information uh, about what worries people. It wasn't f it was for a reason that some people said that they did not, did not want to vaccinate, get vaccinated. And the state is connected to certain demographic groups. Mass media would work with that to reach certain target audience because the people were was major source of information is uh, the television and some website they have been vaccinated and those who uh, consume information coming from the messengers and social networks we have several sources of information that they enjoy they have been more skeptical about vaccination moreover I uh, cannot clearly say if the attitude to vaccine has changed. On the other hand, if uh, people get more and more side effects or uh, fears, fears about side effects, uh, we need to publish more information for them. Uh, 
all the media ecosystem suffered from the same problem um, because everything happened randomly. Well, now we have been living with the COVID uh, over two years. We don't know how long it will last, how much it will affect us. Hence the campaign, the information campaign needs to be regular, involving regular publications, um, description of the best practices exist in the world, mass media doing their best in the trying to tell people about the latest research and the number of people's lives who were saved by the achievements in the healthcare industry. We need to understand that the pandemic will uh, positively affect the development of the med tech. Belarus could have its own achievements here and unique experience among others because the chaotic scintillations uh, that we discussed in the previous hour. They did affect the various countries in a random way. We compare what happened uh, in other countries to what happened with us in our country. Uh, we could come to unexpected conclusions. The development of the medical approaches would take the pandemic to a new level. So the Moderna has been mentioned here. Do many of us know that this company is similar to Tesla that everyone knows about? It has a totally new approaches to the treatment and vaccinations. Well, and they could come with new treatment approaches to other animals. And other things that the rural residents, urban residents and rural residents will be affected in a different way. You can see that we can work from our homes if we have online internet connections, we can hold online events. It will seriously change the economic, political situation in the, in the cities. We must understand that pandemic will affect our lives. It will improve the lives, among other things, because uh, the Spanish flu that uh, appeared uh, about 100 years ago led to the ventilation systems in their homes, which we treat na as something natural these days. There could be a new breakthrough in terms of quality of life for the urban dwellers. There could be new ways to diagnose ailments because the pandemic will contribute to the development of the long distance healthcare. And here again, it's connected with the information technology and various technologies that need broadband. and uh, uh, need to avoid internet blackouts. Right, thank you, Mikhail. I'm glad that we ended on the optimistic note that uh, saying that COVID will bring something good to our life. So on the one hand, We haven't found any ideal solutions we were facing, but we never promised that we would. I think we had a fruitful discussion. Now I would like to understand 
if there are any questions or any remarks. Does anything, anyone from our speakers want to add anything? Not so long ago, together both and Foundation of Medical Solidarity, we discussed the development and prospects of the medical platforms, online medical platforms, and we particularly discussed how uh, long distance um, medicine can affect our lives. I can recommend this video available on YouTube. Since there are no poor people who would like to add anything, I would like to thank all the participants of today's discussion. I would like to thank, wish you great health to get vaccinated. Those uh, people from vulnerable and not so vulnerable groups. Hope uh, we have a great future in ahead of us. Thank you everyone for the discussion and I'll see you next time at the next session. Thank you and goodbye.